Good morning, Miracle Life Family Church, and welcome to this morning's service broadcast. We're so delighted that you can be able to join us. We so love bringing this broadcast to wherever it is that you watch us from, whether it's in your home or wherever it is that uh, you're watching this service. Would you please, in the comment section, tell us where you're watching this service from. We'd also like to ask you, if you'd consider taking some time, to write us a brief testimony on the impact that these services are having on your lives. Your stories mean a lot to us, and they'll help us to know what God is doing in your lives. If it's your first time joining us for this service, would you please write in the comment section, it is my first time joining you for a service at Miracle Life Family Church and someone from, immediate, from our media team will catch your message and write you a welcome message and give you some instructions that we'd like you to follow. We have in-person services. Our first service is at 8 a.m. in the morning and our second service is at 10.30. We'd be so happy to welcome you and to receive. You would like to shake your hand, give you a hug and see your smile. We'd like to get to know a little bit more about you and know your name and uh, so we welcome you please join us for any one of our services very very soon we'll be joining the worship team and the rest of the congregation who have uh, turned up for this morning's service as we worship God together would you please uh, take this time just to grab a notebook and a bible to prepare for the message that will be shared this morning we are starting a new sermon series and the title of the sermon series is God's growth plan we believe with our hearts that God has a plan for you to grow, to become the full person that God intended for you to become. Thank you so very much. We pray that God will bless your worship experience. Good morning, church. Good morning. So good to see you this morning. The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So let's do that this morning. Hallelujah.
hands in the church this morning. We cry holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, the earth is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, you are God in three persons, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, blessed Trinity. We bring our praise, we bring our glory, we bring our honor, we bring our adoration before your throne. We declare the praises of the living God, the God who saves, the God who delivers, the God who sets free, the God who gives life, the God who fills us with his wonder, the God who fills us with his goodness, the God who gives us hope for a future, the God who causes us to raise up from death to life again, the God of all glory, the God of all compassion, the God of mercy. We lift up our praises to the God and Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the maker of the heavens and earth. All other gods are dead, but he alone is the living one, the living God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, Jacob, and of Israel, the God of the living and not of the dead, the God of all creation. To him alone be praised be glory, be honor, and be all adoration. Let the church of Jesus Christ shout, shout aloud, amen. Shout aloud, amen, to the living God. Give him your praise this morning. Give him your praise. He's worthy to be praised. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give him a shout of praise this morning. Give him praise. He's a good God. He's compassionate. He's kind. He's a good God. Now, before you take your seats this morning, I ask you to turn around, greet three people that you didn't come to church with, and thereafter you're welcome to take your seats. Greet three people. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, as you are greeting three people and taking your seats, I'd like to say, um, I don't know if I should say welcome back to ourselves and to myself. We are back. <laughs> now we were on... Thank you, thank you, thank you for the greetings, thank you. We were on a nine-week sabbatical. Thank you so much, Pastor Walk and Haley. It was a great time of rest, of recharging, of reflection, of repair, and renewal. So um, we are so thankful that we had time just to get off and to rest, and we are back now, fully recharged and ready to pursue God's plans and God's purposes. 
Amen. Thank you so very much. Now, I uh, would like to welcome those of you who are joining us at Miracle Life Family Church for the very first time. If it's your first time being here, from our hearts and hearts of our senior pastors, Walker and Elishes, we say welcome. We'd like to know that you are here. Would you please lift up one of your hands right where you are seated? That way you give us opportunity to extend a very special and a warm welcome to you. Our first time guest, would you please lift up one of your hands? We want to welcome you. Thank you so very much. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all the way at the back there. And am I seeing any hands this side? Thank you so very much. Now, our first time guest, if you haven't yet been to the Welcome Center, we ask and would like to invite you to the Welcome Center at the end of the service. Please make your way past the wooden doors. You will see the pop banner that says, first time guest, stop uh, by uh, that room with the glass doors and the tables draped in white. You will find wonderful men and women dressed in white and black. They're from our Welcome Center. They'd like to extend welcome and hospitality to you and also get to know a little more about you. And um, they will also be happy to answer any questions that you might have about Miracle Life Family Church. So once again, thank you so very much and welcome. Praise the church. Let's just give them a wonderful, <laughs> put our hands together for them and just thank them for joining us this morning. Now, you might be wondering what this brave is about. I'm, I'm sure the men know what it's about and the women that we're serving do. If you don't, this is not the theme of our church although we are a brave church, and uh, I mean, it would be good to say 2022 is a brave year, right? No, I mean 2023. 2023 is a brave year, but this is not about the theme of the church in 2023. We just concluded the One Day Bread Men's Conference yesterday at Miracle Life Family Church. Over 1,000 men were impacted and were attacked in a great and mighty way. And um, as we go to this morning's video announcements, we're going to take some time to recap what happened yesterday and then we're going to tell you what's going on at Miracle Life Family Church here, when and where and how you can get plugged in. So may I draw your attention to the screens for this morning's announcements. Get ready to witness the power of yesterday's epic gathering. Picture this. 1,012 brave men on a mission to embrace their divine calling, united as one unstoppable force. They came, they conquered, and they left with hearts on fire. Sharing their struggles, these courageous men found strength, inspiration, and biblical solutions, igniting a spark within their souls. And to our extraordinary speakers, you brought down the house with your powerful words, filling the room with inspiration and fueling our collective journey. We salute you for enriching our experience. But wait, there's more. We can't forget the incredible women who stood strong beside these mighty men, providing unwavering support and love. Your presence was a beacon of unity and encouragement. Brace yourselves for what's coming next, because the Brave Men's Conference 2024 is right round the corner. Save the date, men. Saturday, 8th June 2024 will be an unforgettable day filled with growth, empowerment, and life-changing moments. Get ready to level up your journey, unlock your true potential, and become the hero you were destined to be. The Brave Men's Conference 2024 awaits you, my friend. So grab your calendar, mark that date in bold, and get ready for an experience that will electrify your spirit and set your soul ablaze. Courage, strength, and a whole lot of excitement. The Brave Men's Conference 2024. It's time to rise and be brave. Good morning, Miracle Life Family Church. These are your announcements for this week. You are invited to attend the third essential course by School for Life, Ministry of Helps, and become purposeful and passionate about serving. Enroll for the class to be held on Saturday, 24th June from 9 hours to 12 hours in Classroom 3. Sign up at the SFL table outside the foyer or via our website or the mobile app. Are you a born-again believer and have not been water baptized? The next water baptism takes place on Sunday, the 25th of June at 13 hours. Successful applicants are expected to attend a pre-baptism class on Sunday, the 18th of June at 13 hours in Classroom 3. Sign up via the website or the mobile app. The deadline for application is Tuesday, the 15th of June at 17 hours. 
MLFC Worship invites you to a worship night on Sunday, 25th June at 18 hours. Come and experience a time of worship and the love of God with other believers. If you would like to serve as an usher, a greeter, or on the traffic team, please sign up at the worship table outside the auditorium after the service. All young adults aged 19 to 29 are invited for Merge's annual event, Encounter. Save the date for this year's Encounter, taking place on Saturday, the 15th of July. Impact Youth invites all youth aged between 16 to 18 years old for senior camp. The theme for this year's camp is Conquerors. Camp will run from Monday 21st to Friday 25th August at Camp Chianjano in Lusaka West. Drop off is Monday 21st August between 7 hours to 8 hours and pickup is on Friday August 25th between 13 hours to 14 hours. Charges are 350 kwacha per youth and deadline for payments is Sunday, 13th August. Please note that registration will close after we reach 130 youth. For more information, visit the impact table outside the foyer after the service or the impact office during the week. Come along on an adventure of a lifetime at this year's VBS Stream 1 and Stream 2. We invite children aged 6 to 11 years for five days of an epic adventure where we will be celebrating God's greatness through games, Bible stories, fun crafts, music, and amazing snacks. In order for you to celebrate God's greatness with us for this year's Vacation Bible School, please note that VBS will run on the following dates. Stream 1 from Monday, August 7th to Friday, August 11th from 8 hours to 12.30 hours. Stream 2 from Monday, August 14th to Friday, August 18th from 8 hours to 12.30 hours. Please note that your child will not be allowed to register for both streams. They will only be allowed to register for and attend one stream. Registration for both streams will run from Sunday, June 11th until deadline on Monday, 17th July at 17 hours. Our cap for Stream 1 and Stream 2 is 1,000 children each. We will close registration for both streams at the deadline or once we reach the cap. To register your child, visit the table outside the foyer after the service, the bookshop during the week, the MLFC mobile app, or online at mlfc.org. The registration fee is 80 kwacha per child. Register today. Hey Miracle Life Family Church members, we're embarking on an exciting journey together and we need your help. To ensure we're all connected and informed, we kindly ask you to update your membership information. By updating your information, you receive the latest news, events updates, and personalized messages tailored just for you. So join us on this journey. Update your membership information today using our app or website. Together, Let's build an even stronger and more connected Miracle Life family. For more information about what's happening at Miracle Life Family Church, be sure to refer to the bulletin tab on the mobile app, visit the website, and follow us on social media. Enjoy the service. Well, praise the Lord. Now, here are just a few things I'd like to clarify. Firstly, let's just start with the membership update. Now, the membership update is for everyone who is a member of Miracle Life Family Church. What does that mean? If you have gone through membership class, that is, you attended the three-hour class that was uh, instructed by the senior pastor, Walker and Haley, and maybe there was the presence of some of the other pastors, and you stood in front of the church to be introduced as a member, then you are a member. It's not just because you attend church here every, every week. You know, of course, people think, oh, I, come, I go to Miracle Life, I go there, then I'm a member. No, no, no. If you've done the membership class, then that membership update is for you. And we need to know your information. You know, banks call it know your customers. We kind of call it know your members. So we need you to update your information. Please give us your correct phone number. If you've changed your phone numbers, if you change your home address, if you change your mailing address, if you change your email address, Please update that information. Now, for those of you that fall in the second category, that you've been coming here for many years or for many months and you've never done a class that was instructed by the senior pastors, you've never gone through that class, you can go to the School for Life table 
and apply for membership, and you'll go through the membership track process, then you become a member. How's that? Are we good? If you have any questions, you can please take them to the School for Life table, and the staff there will be happy to help you or see any one of us, the pastors, at the end of the service. God bless you. Now, I also do want to clarify something. I've been told that uh, the Welcome Center is temporarily closed because of the Cell Center for the Resources from the Conferences Day. So all our first-time guests, please make your way to the prayer, um, the prayer room, which is right past those wooden doors, and uh, we'll have someone, again, in uniform to welcome you. And we've just made a temporary welcome center right over there. So please join us this side and not that side. Thank you so very much. Now, we'll be collecting this morning's tithes and offerings. Ashers are in the house uh, handing out offering envelopes. If you'd like to label your giving, they'll be happy to do that. Um, would you please turn with me in your Bibles to Acts chapter number 20 and verse number 31. These are the words of... Uh, this is recorded by Luke, who wrote Acts, recording the words of Paul, Paul, who was quoting the words of Jesus. And Paul says, I have shown you in every way, by laboring like this, that you should support the weak and remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, who he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. It is more blessed to give than to receive. As we take up our test reference this morning, there are five good reasons why giving is good. Number one, it is good because it's good for your mental health. It shifts the focus off of you on onto others. In other words, it kills selfishness. Each time you choose to give and be generous, you are thinking less of yourself and you are fulfilling the words of life and the words of God. Number two, it enables you to walk in your obedience. Your giving is an act of obedience to the commandment of scripture. Now there can be some sacrifice without obedience, but there can never be obedience without sacrifice. Number three, it empowers others. When you hold and when you keep to yourself, you kind of think that you're empowering yourself. But you know, when you are generous and when you give, you empower others. We sow seeds into the lives of others that enable them to grow, to thrive, and to flourish. And in so doing, we make them better, and we make the world a better place. Number four, it enables us to partner with God for his kingdom agenda. Have you ever noticed whenever there is an event or a conference, a, a rally, or something, there's always partners that partner with that event, you know, and they'll put the... The, the, the label or their logo, and, and they'll say this event was sponsored by or supported by. That means those companies, those banks, those organizations took their money and they partnered with, that, with, the with the organizers of that event. They are putting their money in what they believe in. Whenever it is that we give our resources to the kingdom of God, we are doing just that. We are partnering with God for his agenda. We declare that we believe in the agenda of God. Jesus said, where our heart is, our treasure will be also. And then um, giving also expresses our love for God. Our giving is an expression of love towards God. We put into action the words that we express in prayer and in song. So when we give, we think less of ourselves, we walk in obedience, we empower others, we obey God, and we express the love that we have for God. Let's do that today as we give. As you bring your tithes and offerings, as you present them to God, you're expressing your love and your worship for God, and you're obeying him. You're making his agenda come to pass. Begin right where you are. It doesn't have to be big, it doesn't have to be grandiose. Just begin right where you are, and trust God on the other side to do great and mighty things. Let's give generously, let's give willingly, let's give gladly today and see God's kingdom come to pass. Now I do want to let you know that we will be taking up a second offering at the end of the service in honor of our guest speaker, so we ask that uh, you also consider that in your giving this morning. Shall we pray as we give? Father, we thank you for this awesome opportunity to worship you with our tithes and offerings. We bring what you gave us before you. We give it to you and we ask you to use it to advance your kingdom 
to glorify your name, to touch the lives of others. And we thank you that we can obey you. We thank you that we can trust you. We thank you, O oh God, that we can touch the lives of other people. What a great honor and great privilege to partner with you. We thank you, Lord, that these tithes and offerings will glorify your name and build the church of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. I call you Father. I call you Father. Oh, because you're mine. I call As I journey through this life, your daily thoughts for me are good. I am marked by your mighty hand for good. I call you Father, I call you Father. Oh, because you're mine. I call you Father, I call you Father. your my hey your heavenly daddy my hey your heavenly Son. Yes, Lord, you bore me again to be your son. And you're my heavenly daddy. Ooh, it's you, my heavenly daddy. That's vernacular. Hello? Hello? That's vernacular for Romans 8. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that he puts his spirit within us. And we cry out, Abba, Father. Amen? Thanks to everybody who came and participated and helped with the Brave Conference. We so, so appreciate what God did in the hearts of men. And that it will carry on for, for years and years to come. The fruit that we'll see. Amen? All right. Before we get into the word today... Please note that VBS registration opens up today, and always warn people, but it, it's going to sell out fast. It will sell out more than likely this week, all right? And then people cry, and they ask God to open up the door of Noah's Ark again, and it's too late. And then you have to face your kids. There, there, there is no other way. Once registration is closed, it's closed. Um, it doesn't matter who you know, okay? It doesn't matter who your uncle is, okay? So I'm, I'm saying that so that you don't cry and your kids don't cry. So sign up. If you have friends that are not at church today, tell them, hey, you, you need to sign up this week, okay? Thus endeth the warning. All right. So we've got a wonderful treat today. We've got a guest speaker, Pastor Kenneth Estrada who was one of our speakers yesterday at Brave. Some of you ladies may remember his wife, Pastor Lynette Estrada, from Living Free a few years ago. And they pastor Marvelous Church in Orlando, Florida area, Kingdom Life. He's a Rama USA graduate, and we're so, so thankful that God has brought him here. 
and just connected his heart with, with our heart. And so whenever we have a guest speaker that you don't know, don't take the first two minutes to decide if you like them. Open up your heart to the Holy Spirit. He's the teacher. He's the one who unveils the word of God. So let's open up our heart to the Holy Spirit, and let's receive this wonderful gift. Pastor Kenneth Estrada, would you come? We are so, so thankful. Love you. Appreciate you. Well, good morning. Uh, wow, that was kind of soft. And so, ladies, I apologize. I am not my wife. I know that... Um, she is much better than I am, but I just want to say, uh, I do want to bring greetings from her, uh, and so I greet you uh, in the name of Jesus and in the name of Lynette Estrada, and so uh, it is great to be here with you, and um, can we give it up for your pastors, give your pastors a great round of applause. I don't know if you realize the quality of pastors that you have, and you probably do, but sometimes uh, I just want you to know they are a big deal in the U.S. Uh, uh, I remember even before our first time being here, when people heard that we were going to be here for the Living Free Women's Conference, uh, when I say we because I came with my wife because I am her armor bearer, and so um, when they heard we were coming, everybody just kept saying, oh my goodness, you're going to love them, and you're going to love Zambia, and I came to find out that it is true. We absolutely love Zambia. And we love your pastors, and we love all of you. And so thank you so much for being here today. Uh, if this is your first time uh, and you don't like me, please come back another time. I, I would greatly appreciate it. Don't hold it against the pastors here today. Praise God. Well, are you ready for the word today? Yeah. That sounds like about 12 people. Anybody else ready for the word today? Yeah. Now that's a lot better. Oh, uh, before I forget, uh, I do have uh, with me... Um, I only brought one thing as, as my products, and so there's a new book that's been released. It's called The Fight of Your Life. I, forgive me, I did not bring it up here with me. Um, it is already my bestseller because um, it's the only book that I've written, but um, <laughs> I did it out of obedience to the Lord, and so it is blessing a whole lot of people. In that book, I share uh, testimony and, and, and really just kind of transparent about some things that my wife and I went through when she was pregnant with our first child. She uh, she's a marvelous uh, wife, marvelous worship leader, and, and so during, while she was pregnant, uh, all the way up until time to deliver, uh, her water broke during, <laughs> during praise and worship, and so, yes, this is true, and so, um, and so she left church, didn't even, um, I, I kept on preaching, I have no clue what I was talking about that day, uh, I told the team to burn the CD. This was back when we put things on, on CD. I said, burn it. I said, we never want to release it to the public because um, I made absolutely no sense. But anyways, the baby didn't come until Tuesday. And uh, not to glorify the devil, but uh, my wife ended up having two seizures, which she had never done before. But that wasn't even the issue. It was the fight that we went through afterwards. Uh, a lot of torment in her thoughts, a lot of anxiety. And, and so in that, I share how to overcome that and that has been helping a whole lot of people. We had someone that is even a mental health um, uh, physician, I guess you would call it, and they, they sent a testimony that said, I read your book, absolutely love it, and I want to use it for my clients and, and everything like that. So it's real simple, uh, but I believe it will be a blessing to you. So that can be found somewhere. You can just follow the instructions of whoever, and it was <laughs> available to you. And I will make myself available, not that it will make the book worth even more, but I'll make myself available to sign it for a few minutes uh, at the end of service if you want to. So I trust that I won't be embarrassed by going back there and nobody is there with a book. But if so, um, you help me with pride. So thank you so much. Praise God. Will you grab your Bibles real quick? Let's wave it in the air, give the devil a nervous breakdown and say with me, this is my Bible. It is the ever-living, indestructible word of God. As it goes forth out of my mouth, it accomplishes the will of God. I am who it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, as we get into the word, my mind is alert and my spirit is receptive. And I'm ready to receive the engrafted word of God, which is able to save my soul. Thank you, Father, for revelation knowledge flooding the eyes of my heart today 
in Jesus' name. Can you do me one more favor? Just stretch your hands towards me and let's pray together. Father, we thank you so much for the wonderful honor and privilege we have to receive from you. We do believe that your word is you speaking to us. And as we get into the word today, we'll receive your word just as that. And we thank you for revelation knowledge. We thank you for understanding, for illumination. Spirit of God, I'm yielded to you and I'm thankful for you helping us. I depend upon you today for utterance. And so I believe that my mouth is hooked up to my spirit. As I say so often, and my spirit is hooked up to your mouth. And I'll speak as the very oracles of God. And I thank you for words from heaven for this time, for this season, for those that are here. That whatever it is that you would have to be said, to be done, I'm yielded to you, sir. And I thank you so much. Father, I desire that you get all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise in Jesus' mighty name. If you agree with that, say amen. 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 Well, let's open our Bibles real quick to John chapter 15. John chapter 15. I'm going to be speaking uh, on a subject that is absolutely extremely simple, and, and, and please bear with me because a lot of times when you teach on this subject, it's not hard to teach it, but a lot of times it's so simple that it's, it's easy not to receive it. And what I mean by that is because a lot of times people tune you out because they know the subject so well, but really we know it with our intellect. As a matter of fact, the, what I'm going to be sharing on uh, would, uh, and it's burning in my heart because I'm actually working on a book that I'm trying to finish before uh, Rayma USA's camp meeting this summer, because um, uh, I guess I'm an author now, you know, so it's, it's kind of what, it's kind of what we do. Um, but, but really, it's, it's meant to accompany uh, this book, and, and um, it's really simple, and um, I'll share this with you too. I, I study, I, I have notes, I practice um, that, but the way the Lord uses me is more inspirationally, so I teach, preach, whatever it is that he would have for me to do. And so I encourage you to pull on the gift of God that's on the inside of me, not because I'm some great orator, um, some great speaker. You, you may have, uh, again, if you don't like me, uh, I apologize ahead of time. But I'm just here to deliver what God has for, for us today. Anybody else ready to receive what God has for them? So I need you to believe God with me for utterance and for all these different things that's taking place. So uh, in John chapter 15, let's go ahead and make this legal by quoting a scripture at least just in case. I just go ahead and carry on. But John 15, in verse 5, it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in, what? In me, and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. How many know without God, you can't, without Jesus, you can do nothing? Let's skip to verse 7. It says, if you abide in me, if you abide where? In me, and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire. You mean this is available? You will ask what you desire, and it will be, it shall be done for you. Verse 8, by this, my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you'll be my disciples. Now, of course, in this context, it's talking about prayer fruit, and, and we should. I mean, what's the point of praying if you don't get results? And so there are ways that we can get results in our prayers, and, and we serve such a wonderful God that actually wants to meet every single one of our needs, has the ability, has the capacity to do so. But I want to continue on with this. Um, in verse 9, he continues on, and he says, as the Father loved me. I love that. The Jesus, you'll notice that he talks very often about how much he's loved by his Father. Now, I'm just going to tell you this. Uh, from the beginning, I am God's favorite. Now, I know theologically speaking, that's not correct, but the way that he treats me, I just feel that way. It's okay if you feel that way as well. I know he's no respect of persons, uh, so I know some of you are like, false doctrine, but uh, that's just how I feel. The way anybody else has been treated so well by God that you just start to think that I'm just really his favorite, and you should think that. You really should, should have that mindset, not, not from a place of pride, but just because he is just that good. How many have come to find out that God is good? The Lord is good and his mercy endures for how long? Forever. The Lord is, come on, can we say it together? Say, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Say it again. Say, the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Now let's make it personal. Say, Lord, you are good and your mercy 
endures forever. Come on, he is merciful. I mean, even when you think you've run out of mercy, there's a new day, and his mercies are new every morning. Praise God. Great is his faithfulness. And so Jesus is saying this, as the Father have loved me, I also have loved you. To the same level that my Father loved me is the same level that I've loved you with. But he says, abide in my love. Dwell there. And there's power there. And it goes on to say this, uh, these things I've spoken to you. Why? That my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. And this is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. Then greater love has no one to miss than to lay down one's life for their friends. And I'll share this with you. So I grew up as a pastor's kid. So my father, I mean, I, I was saved from young. Even when I went, uh, when I <laughs> went in my diaper, it came out in the shape of a cross. And so I just, just it's, <laughs> it's just what I, what I knew. I, I grew up in church. Uh, and and I, I believed that God loved me. And, you know, in Sunday school, uh, you know, we would have... Sunday school. I grew up in the Caribbean, um, and so our culture uh, was like this. We would have Sunday school. We'd have what we call kids' church or children's church, where uh, where all the kids would would be in their service, and we'd sing different songs like um, I don't know, you know, Father Abraham had many sons. I don't know. Oh, y'all know that too. Okay, had many sons. Right hand, left hand. Turner, you know, all this different stuff. And we would just sing it. I mean, all these hit songs. But of course, we would sing songs like Jesus loves me. This I. Oh, you know it. Oh, it's taking you back now, isn't it? And, and the thing is, is that we would, we would sing that, and it was so pure and so true. And it was something that we would know, but it's not enough to just know it here. And what I've come to find out this past Monday, last week Monday, was 18 years since we started our church. And I've come to find out that, um, I know I look like I'm 20, very good. Um, that's because I have a wife that doesn't stress me out. Praise the Lord. Amen. Because I treat her well as a man. Amen. Ladies, did, did your man come home pretty good last year? Hey, praise the Lord. I trust some of you wives rewarded your husbands. Praise the Lord. Oh, we're getting quiet now today. We're getting, we're getting a little too quiet. Um, but here's the thing is that we would sing that and we would know that. And I grew up in church and I, 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 I knew, knew that God loved me, but there was just something that, there was just this feeling where I felt like I just disappointed God. And, and, and really because Satan comes to try to hinder us from knowing how much God loves us, from experiencing his love. It's, it's why, again, I shared this yesterday, it's why you notice that, that he never did try to question, get, um, get Adam and Eve to question in Genesis chapter 3 whether God did exist. He never tried to get them to, to doubt his existence. But he got them to, to question, did God really say? Oh, he's only saying that because he doesn't want you to have knowledge like he does. In other words, God really doesn't care. And a lot of individuals, a lot of believers are having issues with knowing how much God loves them. How do we know that? Because the Bible tells us that love that is mature casts out all fear. All forms of fear, that includes anxiety, that includes depression, that includes all, all, all fear and its effects. And so when love is not perfected and mature, you can be sure that what's happening is that there's a lack of understanding of the love that God has for you. So for me, um, when I turned 16 years old, I, I, I started to get serious about the things of God. Um, I didn't do a whole lot of wrong or anything like that, but it's amazing that even if you don't do a whole lot of wrong, so to speak, whatever that means, um, in other words, you know, I guess the stuff like drugs and all the things that people, I mean, the worst thing I did was smoke toilet paper. It's a, I know, it's a, it's a shame. It's, the, it's, a, it's a shame what happens with peer pressure, you know. Um, a true story, don't try it, it'll burn your chest. Like, um, so I learned real quick. But I remember when I started getting serious about the things of God, I, I, at 16, I figure, well, if you're going to get serious about the things of God, what do you do? And so I said, I guess you put on Christian television because I thought that's what I saw serious adult Christians do. So I started putting on Christian television. And at the time, uh, Brother Benny Hinn came on. And, and he's ministering to this mass of people. And he's doing all the different stuff. Sing it again. Then sings my soul. And, uh, amen. Sing it again. And, and all that. And he said, lift up your hands. And he says, touch. 
and people have fallen out all over the audience. And, and what's their problem? Pastor Benny, you know, and, and they're saying all these different things. This lady, she came this way. And, and, and he said, lift up your hands. Fire. And they're falling out under the power of God. And, and pick him up again. And I, I'm watching this. And, I'm, and I remember this. And I said, Lord, I said, you must really love Benny Hinn. It seems real sad that I'm saying that, but I, I heard so real on the inside of me, I heard, I do. And then I heard this, I said, the Lord said to me, he said, and I love, I said, he said, he said, did you know I love you just as much as I love him? And for me at this time as a 16-year-old, this was a big deal because I loved the flash and I love all the different things. And I said, really? And then I heard this and this revolutionized my life forever. I heard the Lord say, uh, the uh, Father say this to me. He said, he said, I do. He said, as a matter of fact, I love you just as much as I love my son, Jesus. Love you just as much as I love my son, Jesus. And I would love to tell you that everything completely changed from there on, but how many know the revelation is, is progressive? And so I want to look at some stuff here. Um, real quick, I'm not sure why this is so dark, but let's go to um, Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. I'm, I'm not going to rush it. How many of you still believe in God with me today? Um, we're going to get you out on time, but what I mean is because I'm inspirational, uh, I may not have a conclusion. I may just stop. <laughs> and so, but in Galatians chapter 5 verse 6, it says, for in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision avails anything. But faith, which works by love, a faith working through love. And so your love is, your faith is energized by love. And we've heard this verse, and a lot of times we think of just, just us walking in love towards other people. And there is truth in that. But I like to say it this way, that your faith works by love. In other words, the love, the agape. The, the Bible tells us in 1 John that God is love. God is agape, and so your faith works by love. Your faith works by knowing the love that God has for you. And again, y'all bear with me because what happens a lot of times when you start talking about this is because you know all the Sunday school songs is that people start to tune you out. But here's the thing is that I, I, I don't apologize for teaching faith. I teach faith. I, I live faith. I believe in confessing the word, all these different things. But what has happened is that a lot of believers have turned things and turned what we teach about faith into just religious practices and into religious formulas that lack intimacy with God. And then when something doesn't quite work, then people start to get upset and they say, oh, that confession business doesn't work. And that faith thing, and you get frustrated. And God, why is this? And, and why is this not happening? And all these different things. And, and even, uh, again, I, I'm a pastor, so I've, I've heard it and I've seen things. People that's been serving, and you think that they're doing it out of love for God and because God loves them. But then when they fall into a challenge or a trial, I've heard this and it may sound familiar. They'll say, Lord, I've been at church every single Sunday. I've been serving serving. I've been showing up 30 minutes before service and I serve both services or I do this and, and, and why is this happening to me? Don't you see what I'm dealing with? In other words, you're questioning, does God really care for you? And you think that you'll get what it is that you're expected for because of your good works. And yes, there should be some good works, but can I say this, can I submit this to you, that the love that God has for you, it is not dependent upon your good character, as, as, as important as good character is, I believe, and your pastors are some of the most integral people that I know, and I, you should celebrate that. But as, as important as good character is, the love that God has for you is not determined by how good your character is. The love that God has for you is not determined by, by how well you perform for him, though you should be fruitful. But a lot of believers are, are making things in such a way that, well, I did this for you, God. I did this for you, and why this and why that? And it tells me, and it says to the Lord that you haven't quite gotten this as yet. Are you all still here with me? Praise the Lord. And so when we understand how much God loves us, it becomes natural. It becomes easy to have faith in him, to trust his word, 
to, to believe he is faithful to fulfill his promises to us. Without revelation of this truth, your faith will absolutely be hindered. Your relationship with God will be hindered. But the thing is, if we do know, if we do understand that God loves us, um, it, it just does mighty and marvelous things. Here's the thing. If you believe that God is vengeful and out to get you, you'll think that anything bad, anything hurtful is an act of God to punish you or to teach you a lesson. And so understanding God's love is vital to our faith. Now, we understand this. We do live in a fallen world where, um, where this world, this fallen world produces trouble. Uh, and if we yield to sin, there are consequences to bear. I'm not um, going away from that. So we understand that. But here's the thing is that knowing we have a heavenly father that is there to help us through trials and through temptations of life, uh, who is always for us and never against us, is one of the foundations of our faith. That sustains us. And so instead of turning away from him or blaming him in times of trouble or temptation, what we'll do instead is we'll run to him and receive his mercy. Somebody said mercy. And grace. But without a proper view of God's love, like I said, you'll turn faith into a religious formula. And so let's go real quick to um, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many are thankful that he loves you? I mean, you have to absolutely believe it, that, that the love that God has for you, there's no strings attached to it. It is unconditional. You are loved. You, you have been accepted into the beloved. Praise God. And, and that word accepted, uh, that word of beloved, I'm sorry, it's, it's the same word that is used when, when the angel came and appeared to Mary and said, um, you know, blessed and highly favored are you. So you are accepted in the beloved. Accepted, I'm sorry, the word accepted. So, so here's the thing is that you've been accepted. You are favored by God himself. No matter how long you've been saved, I, even if you just got saved yesterday at the men's conference, you, you are accepted. You are favored by God. God absolutely loves you. <coughs> Excuse me. So in Ephesians chapter 3, Paul here, there's this prayer in Ephesians chapter 1 and Ephesians chapter 3 that I believe that we should be um, reading and meditating on. Um, Brother Hagen taught us this, Dad Hagen. He, he taught us to, to read these prayers, to pray these prayers, make it personal over, our, over yourselves um, every single day. And he even gave a challenge to do it straight for six months and don't miss a day. And it's amazing what happens, but I found it interesting that Paul, he prayed this prayer in Ephesians chapter 3 from verse 14. And it says this, it says, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father, how many glad he's your father? The father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. Isn't it strange? He's saying this to believers. But he's praying that, I'm praying that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being what? Rooted and grounded in what? In love. That you being rooted and grounded in love may be able to comprehend with all saints. I quoted, so I lost my space. May be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. In other words, the different dimensions of love. So even if you have some revelation of love, there's, you may, you may even, even if you did understand the length there's still a height, there's still a depth, there's still, there's so many dimensions to love, but he says that you may know the width, the length, the depth, the height, and to know the love of Christ, to what? To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God. So in other words, this is a spiritual truth that cannot be grasped with just your natural mind. Are you all here? Is this understandable? Is this Okay. It cannot be grasped with just your natural mind. There's a reason why Paul was praying it. And it almost seems like he's contradicting himself when he's saying that you, uh, that you may know, 
to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge. Well, how can I know the love of Christ which passes knowledge? Well, if we look at it in the Amplified, it kind of clarifies some things a little bit. So let's look at verse 17 in the Amplified, and I'll read it to you. It says, may Christ, through your faith, actually dwell, settle down, abide, make his permanent home in your hearts. May you be rooted deep in love and founded securely on love. Verse 18, that you may have the power... And be strong to apprehend and grasp with all the saints, God's devoted people, listen to this, the experience of that love. Say experience. Experience. The experience of that love. What is the breadth and length and depth and height of it? That you may, verse 19, it says this, that you may really come to know what? Practically, through experience for yourselves. Pastors Walker and Haley can't do this for you. Your mother can't do this for you. Your father can't do this for you. That you may know practically through experience for yourselves the love of Christ which far surpasses mere knowledge without experience. That you may be filled through all your being (laughs) unto all the fullness of God may have the richest measure of the divine presence and become a body wholly filled and flooded with God himself. You must know and understand firsthand with no doubt, without a doubt, that God loves you. He loves you unconditionally. No strings attached. It's not, as I said, it's not based upon your performance. And again, as I'm teaching this, some might be saying amen, but still struggling with the idea that God loves them. And think about it this way. The funny thing is, When we introduce people to Jesus, we tell them how much God really loves them, don't we? I mean, the love of God compels people to salvation. It it, it does. I I mean, I'll be honest with you. I got saved because I was terrified of hell. I saw a movie on hell, and I said, I don't want to go there. I just, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. But but as I started to get to know the love of God more, there was a sustaining power in love. As a matter of fact, if you read through the Gospel of John, The writer of that gospel, he keeps talking about this disciple that Jesus loved, the disciple that Jesus loved, and and the disciple that Jesus loved. And and finally at the end, he finally reveals who the disciple that Jesus loved is. It was John. Of course, he waited till all the other disciples died before he wrote that. But but you got to love his attitude. You know, here's the thing. Peter talked a lot about how much he loved Jesus. Lord, I love you. Lord, I'm willing to die with you. But, But when Jesus was being taken away, who was... Who was found at the cross? It was John. Peter talked a lot about how much he loved Jesus. John talked a lot about how much Jesus loved him. And he was the one that was at the cross. And Jesus, while he's on the cross, trusted John with his most prized earthly relationship. He said, this is your mother now. And spoke to his mother, this is your son. And there's just something about when you really live this way, it it transforms your life. And it's been said about John that they they tried so many different ways to kill him, and and they they couldn't, even to the point where they tried to boil him alive, and they just couldn't kill the guy. There's, There's just sustaining power in the love that God has for you. Again, your faith is energized by love. Faith works by love. Is this making sense? I'm just hoping it is. I know it's real simple, but again... While I'm teaching this, you may, you may mentally agree with this, but yet there's still challenges. Sometimes because of the things that we went through. Sometimes because we relate our relationship with God through uh, relationships that we may have had. Maybe a father or lack of a father or a mother or grandparents or a teacher or, 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 or pastors and, and all these different things. And, and, and we try to import our relationship with them onto our relationship with God and we try to view God that same way. But he is so much better. Jesus said, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give good things and give the Holy Spirit to them? And so think about it. We have more faith for other people than we do ourselves. 
Let's say you're talking with someone and someone says to you, oh, no, you don't understand how, how bad I've been. Uh, you know, this, this, let's say someone is believing for healing and, and you say, oh, they, you hear them say, oh, well, because, because of all the wrong I did in my past, this is why this. You would tell them, no, there's nothing. I mean, we even know the scriptures. Nothing can separate you from the love that Christ has. Oh, the love that God has for you. No, don't talk like that. He loves you. There's nothing that you can do that can never stop God from loving you. Don't we? We say these things. Oh, God loves you. But then when it comes to us, we have such a hard time really believing that. I mean, if we're honest with ourselves and so we start thinking that, well, this is happening because of this. Oh, I can't expect this. And, and, and can you see how this simple revelation will actually transform? And this is why Paul was praying. He prayed this. Because here's the thing. Your faith can fail. The word of God never fails. So... Just because you're believing for something, it doesn't change the word if you didn't get your answer. But here's the thing. Paul was praying. He said, I'm praying that you be rooted and grounded in love. That your roots go down deep in love. Now, for me, I, I, I grew up in the Caribbean. And, um, and so we have, I grew up in the island of St. Thomas. And so when you plant something, the soil is really rich. And so mango trees just will grow well and coconut trees and, and cucumbers and all these different things. And, and because of where it, if you have good soil, um, certain fruit tastes different based upon what soil it grows in. Does that make sense? I know this is an agricultural place, so you guys would understand this. And, and, um, and the thing is, I may try, I just had lychee for the first time. Yeah, I know. It's like, where you been? <laughs> in America. Um, <laughs> but if I tried to, which they wouldn't let me, but if I tried to bring some seeds, uh, the lychee seed to Florida and try to grow that, it probably may not grow as well there because of the type of soil, because the soil we have is sand pretty much. Um, but even if I tried, it may not taste as good as it does from here because of the soil. Is this making sense? And so when you're rooted and grounded in the love that God has for you, it adds more flavor to your life. It, it, it produces more. It, it's just, and again, I know this is simple. It's so simple. But again, perfect love casts out all fear. And even on the property of our church, um, before we were able to clear it out, there were, there's all these trees, and the trees are still there. And, and I remember thinking to myself, I'd like to clear out some of these so it can be more visible from, from, the, um, from the road. And, and then I come to find out that, oh, you can't cut those trees down because they're protected in America. Um, and to, to move one, it would cost about $2,000 per tree. So you figure out what that is in Quacha, and, and you come back to me. And so to move it, like I can't even cut it, we have to move it, uproot it, and replant it somewhere else. And so I said, wow. And so there was a storm coming through, and of course, we're taking our authority over that storm. And I'm like, Lord, uh, listen, we don't want our building or anything to be affected, but I really wouldn't mind if, if you knock down some of these, <laughs> if you allow some of these trees to just be uprooted. But because those roots went down so deep, in the midst of a storm, I came back to the property after the storm and, of course, no, no, nothing on our building, no, no issues or anything like that. And I came looking for at least one of the trees. Not one was uprooted because the roots went so deep. And when your roots are deep in the love that God has for you, storms may come, the winds may blow, all kinds of different things. But because you've been rooted so deep, nothing shall uproot you, nothing shall be able to take you, nothing shall shake you. Because you know the love that God has for you. Praise God. You must know this for yourself. Let's go to 1 John real quick, and I'll, I'll start to close with this. 1 John. Praise God. 1 John chapter 3, I'll just, I don't think, I don't even know if I gave them these scriptures, so I'll just read a few of these. 1 John 3 verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God. Praise God. Man, it's the love that God has for us, that we are called children of God. First John chapter 4. Uh, no, no, no. Before that, um, yeah, chapter 3, uh, verse 18. My little children, let us not love in word or in deed, but in, uh, in tongue, but in deed and in truth. And by 
This we know. Somebody said we know. By this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. Verse 20, look at this. It says, for if our heart condemns us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. In other words, even if your heart condemns you, of course, you shouldn't let your heart condemn you, but even if your heart condemns you, God is even greater than your heart. Right? And knows all things. You know, sometimes we act like we got to be, you know, you know how church people are. We, we try to put on the best for everybody, and it's like we try to do the same thing for God. Like, he doesn't know. Like, he's like, okay. <laughs> but God knows all things. So even if your heart condemns you, God knows your heart and knows all things, and God is greater than your heart. But look at this, verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have what? Confidence toward God, and whatever we ask, we receive from him. Guys, this is available for every single one of us. Whatever we ask, we receive from him. Because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. Now, let me, uh, let me skip over to chapter 4 and uh, verse 16. It says, and we have known. We have what? Known and believed. You must know and you must believe what? The love that God has for us. God is love and he who abides in love. Remember, Jesus said, abide in my love. If you abide in me and my words abide in you. And then he says, abide in my love. I'm, say, I'm telling you these things that your joy, may, that my joy may remain in you and that your joy may be full. So that you abide in love. He who abides in love abides in God and God in him. And love has been perfected among us in this that we may have what? Boldness in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out, all, casts out fear because fear involves torment. But he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. He who fears have not been made perfect in love. And again, perfect love casts out all fear. But look at this again, verse 17. Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment. 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 You have boldness in the day of judgment because of the love that God has for you. But let me submit this to you. The Greek word there for judgment is actually spelled K-R-I-S-I-S. -I, I don't know if it's pronounced crisis or crisis, but it's where we get the, the Greek word where we get the word crisis from. So even in the day of crisis, whatever crisis you may ever go through, we can have boldness in that day because of his love. Because I know because God loved me so much, he, he put Mark 11, 22, 23, 24 in there that I can apply, that I can, and I can use my authority. He gave me authority. He gave me the name of Jesus. God so loved me that he demonstrated his love by giving his son Jesus for me. So uh, this is my closing because I'm done. Is that you must know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God absolutely loves you. It's, it's simple, but there's a reason why Paul prayed it. There's a reason why Paul prayed it. That you may know for yourselves, that you may experience this love that God has for you. It makes everything different. It makes it so much easier to believe and accept. And so even if you have to go through life throughout the day and just saying, God, I'm so glad that you love me. Oh, Jesus, I'm so glad that you love me, that you remind yourself of this love that he has for you. You don't have to talk him into being good. You don't have to talk him into blessing you. He is good because he is love. And the only reason why we can love him is because he first loved us. Let me pray for you. Father, I thank you so much for this word. 
for this truth. I know that it's real simple. I know it seems real elementary, but I know it. And you're showing me this, how important and how vital it is that we have an understanding and a knowledge of this love that he has for us, that you have for us. And so I thank you. And I pray for everyone here that the word would have been sown, that many would have received this. And I know that there are individuals that are dealing with challenges and even some that may be thinking suicidal thoughts, thoughts from the enemy, thoughts that they're not good enough, thoughts that they can't perform well enough. But I thank you, Father, that today, by your spirit, you're helping them to know that there's no strings attached, that as they get rooted and grounded in the love that you have for them, that everything changes. We honor you. We praise you for it in Jesus' name. Real quick, as I get ready to turn this over to Pastor Walker, if you're in this place today and you don't know Jesus for yourself, I'm not asking if you're religious. I'm not asking if you go to church or whatever, you could have been coming to this church. It's not about church membership, but you don't know for yourself. And you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I would hate to come all this way and not give you an opportunity to receive this Jesus, that God loves you so much that you can know how much he loves you. You can know the value that he placed upon your life. There's nothing else that can do it for you. God loves you. He has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. Now, the devil, the devil has a purpose for your life as well, but you must know this and you must receive this. So with all heads bowed, all eyes closed, if you're in this place and you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life and you say, Pastor, can you please pray for me? Pray with me. If you slip your hand up, I'd love to see that hand. I believe there's some people in the aisles to help me see your hand just in case. I would hate to leave this place. I know we might be, all be family in here, but just in case, and I know these camera lights in my eyes, so if that's you, if you slip your hand up real quick so I can see that hand, pray with you, pray for you. You've ever made Jesus the Lord of your life, and today is a day of salvation. You want to receive that. Maybe somebody introduced you. Maybe, uh, maybe I came all this way just for one person. If that's you, if you slip your hand up, I'll see the hand. I'd love to pray with you, pray for you. Second invitation, you're in this place, and you, you once made Jesus the Lord of your life, but maybe you struggle with this issue, and, 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 and you've been tormented, and, uh, or you made decisions. Maybe you got hurt in another church, and uh, someone that you loved and someone that you trusted kind of harmed you. Maybe you just started hanging with the wrong crowd and doing wrong things. I want to say today is a day where you can have a fresh start. You want to rededicate your life today. If that's you, if you slip your hand up, I'll see the hand and pray with you, pray for you. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Well, seems like we're all family in here today. How many believe that Jesus is Lord? I sound like 12 people. Um, so maybe I need to stick with this. How many believe that Jesus is Lord? Yeah. Amen. So let's just make that confession. Say, I thank you, Lord. That you are Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. How many believe that you're loved by God? Amen. Praise God. Amen. Would you welcome Pastor Walker? Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad you came to church? Amen, amen. I, I really believe that, that God sent Pastor Kenneth with that word, and it is for you. And, and some of the things that he said that if, if you keep thinking that, yeah, God will do that for somebody else but not for me, that this is what, what you can cultivate. And one of the great things we learned this morning is, we, we, in a sense, we were given homework today to take Ephesians chapter 3, 15 to 21 and put our name in it. We can pray that for ourself. That God, I would know your love and I would experience your love. And those roots will go deeper and deeper and deeper. Amen. So we're going to receive an offering today for Pastor Kenneth and his ministry. Galatians 6 verse 6 says, let him who is taught the word. So that would be us, right? Let him who is taught the word share in all good things with him who teaches. The old King James, it says to communicate. So sometimes people think, oh, I communicate. I gave him a high five. Um, share in all good things. There is a, there was a New Testament principle that as ministers would travel and go from place to place, that those that receive them would, would look after them, but then also send them financially to wherever God wants to take them. And so... God has opened up doors for he and, and his wife to do a number of different things. They've been invited back to South Africa for uh, later this year. Uh, and so we want to be a blessing to this ministry. Amen. If you need an offering envelope, just lift up your hand. Uh, if you want a, a record, if you want to 
use the offering envelope, just lift up your hand. We'll, we'll put that in your hand. We're going to receive an offering for them. 100% of this will go into to that ministry to, to send this to other places around the world where God has, has asked them to go. And, and obviously with, with different travel restrictions around the world easing up, uh, Pastor Kenneth was saying that that is, that God's opening up for them uh, new doors of opportunity. So we want to communicate. And it's a, it's a great, great blessing to be a church like, like ours that blesses guest ministers. Amen? So here's what we're going to do. We're just going to pray over this offering. And sometimes the Lord will impress upon you a certain amount because their ministry has needs and, and they're looking to do certain things. And God may impress, uh, talk to you about doing something. And if he doesn't, then we'll just obey the word. We'll, we'll share good things. We'll be a blessing, all right? And, and God has been good to us, and we can be good to his ministers who are building up the kingdom of God. Amen? So, Father, we open up our hearts to you right now. Thank you that we receive this word with gladness in our heart. Father, that our lives would be rooted and grounded further and stronger in the love that you have for us. And, Father, thank you that today we will be generous we will act in faith, Lord. We'll bless this wonderful ministry, Father, the ministry this, that you've given to the Estradas. And, Lord, thank you that we have an opportunity to bless them back today. Lord, we love you and bless you in Jesus' name. So go ahead and prepare your offering. We're going to receive that. And on your way out, there'll be um, blue buckets uh, that'll be on the way. If you would rather give electronically, you can use the kiosk on the way out. You just need to make sure you um, designate that and then take the receipt, put it in the blue bucket, okay, or put it in an envelope so that we'll, so we'll know where that needs to go. Amen? So one of the ways that God demonstrates his love for us is that he, in his word, he gives us many precious promises that, that indicate his willingness to act, his willingness to help us. And so if you're, if you're facing some tough times in your life, or maybe something in your family, our care team is up front, and they will pray with you. Um, they love you, but it's not just because they love you, but there's some promises that you can see together from God's word and watch him do what he said he'll do in, in your life. So if you're struggling, if there's stuff you're facing, please, please don't leave here struggling or leave here with those issues still going on. But when we're dismissed, just come forward. We would love to have the opportunity to pray with you, pray for you. All right? Hallelujah. Let's just lift up one of our hands towards heaven. Father, we thank you so much that you do love us. And Father, when Satan would tempt us to look at our past and to look at our failures, we look to Calvary, that you did not spare your own son, but willingly gave him up for us. How will you not also with him freely give us all things. And so, Father, thank you for Jesus. Thank you for that love that continues in our life today. And, Father, that we will receive it in the areas of our life where we need to know that you do care and that you do act and you do help. Lord, we love you today. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Isn't Jesus wonderful? Amen. God bless you so much. We're going to be dismissed we're going to dismiss from the back to the front if you'd allow the ushers to do that. Have an awesome, awesome week in Jesus. We love you so much. God bless.